Hey guys, Paul Strong here. And today let's talk about the new league mechanic in Twin Nightmare and how you can make the most out of it. Now first we'll go over the base mechanics and after that we can kind of talk about strats to make you the most of E possible. Now in order to show you this, I'm gonna quickly open a map. Now, if you are in maps already, then every single one will have the league mechanic. If you're in acts, it will not. It will be like every third or fourth. It's like a chance. So you will be greeted with this advent of nightmare every single time. Once you click on it, some stuff happens. But before, I just want to tell you how this works. This whole league mechanic revolves around building your own basically loot explosions, right? It's called a nightmare. In there, you're going to face some tough enemies. You're going to have to, yeah, kill some stuff. And then you get rewards in the form of bubbles. More on that in a second. But all you need to know is that what you're doing in the map is dream sequences. And all these are are basically stages to improve your loot or your bubbles that you can then get in the nightmare later. Now, if you play Path of Exile, the best comparison to this is building your own temple, your own loot temple with Alva, right? That's kind of what you're doing. So it's it's not very, very well signaled. Now, what this means is advent of nightmare chance is 0%. That means if I click on this, you're not going to get teleported to a nightmare. This goes up and up the longer it goes. Basically, this means that the dream sequences are kind of random. Sometimes you're going to get three. Sometimes you're going to get ported immediately after the third. Sometimes it's going to take you longer. The longer it takes, usually the better because the more you can do with your bubbles. So I click on the advent of nightmare right here. And what's going to happen right now is there's going to be monsters that I have to kill. So I will just do that real quickly. Actually, I don't know if I have everything set up correctly. This one is not correct. Okay. Now, um, what you have to do is you have to kill these rare mobs with these like blue things over their head. So these right here, they died too fast to show you. But basically, yeah, these right here, these blue bubbled enemies is what you want to kill. And then after a certain amount of time, you can see up here kind of the graph with how many you have killed already. And once that is full... Yeah, you have it completed. Usually the timer is very, very nice about it. So after you're done, you can either go here and click on it directly, or you can also go up here. Now, if you missed it last map, it's still going to prompt you on the next map. So you can't miss it or anything like that. Don't worry. Now, in here, I'm starting with a certain amount of bubbles. So on the first stage, basically, you're going to get a nightmare that is down here. So I already did the first stage. What the stage gave me is up on entering a nightmare for every three commodity bubbles, which is basically currency, those are these ones, I get another red commodity bubble. So on your first stage, I'm already at the second floor, on your first floor, you are going to get a effect that is going to affect your whole dream sequence. So it could be stuff like, I don't know, whenever you add a bubble after this, it's going to upgrade by one. And with upgrade, it basically means the rarity. So a white bubble gives you almost no loot. It's like, okay, at best. A blue one gives you more. Then it goes to purple, orange, red. And then if you have something unlocked that we're going to talk about later, you can also get rainbow. But just to make this clear, the first sweet dream floor gives you initial bubbles and a global effect. And then floors two to whenever the nightmare starts, it's going to randomly TP you in. It gives you extra bubbles and upgrades them. So right now we're on floor two. So it's going to enhance the bubbles that we got on stage one. These are completely random. You will only start out with two. You can enhance that though over time. There is a passive tree for that. I will show you all about it. So what it says right here is it gives me an upside and then a downside. The upside will add stuff or remove stuff, add stuff, or increase the quality. In general, increasing quality is very, very strong. The difference in tiers is staggering, especially when you get higher up. So right here, I have adds two commodity bubbles that are purple. Let's just take this for example. But I could also um, replicate two commodity bubbles. So I see that I have two commodity bubbles. In terms of what rewards are good, also going to talk about that later. That's not interesting right here. I get two commodity bubbles. Boom. I click it, and now I get two that are purple or better. In this case, I actually high rolled. I got more than purple. So purple is the tier after blue. And then gold is the tier after purple. Now, I just cleared another map. And we're now on the next one. I just did the bubbles. So we're now on Sweet Dream Floor 3. And we can now add more stuff if we want to or upgrade stuff. One thing I wanted to mention here, there's not much more. It is not more complex than this. But one thing I wanted to mention is you can actually, if you don't like any of your options. So the downsides can be rough, right? whatever nightmare roots you will know what that means once you have done it a little bit and how rough it is but if you don't like any of your options you can also click here and then you get this default option which gives you a very slim downside but it just upgrades the quality of one bubble by one tier which is not great 
but it's not terrible. It's better than doing nothing. So in, for example, it just upgraded this. Now, the more and more you do of these, the more this percentage chance will actually go up. So for example, right here, advent of nightmare chance 10%. Now there's a one in 10 chance that we're actually gonna get the nightmare. In this case, we got lucky, so we can do another sweet dream floor. I guess one more important thing that I have to add here is whim bubbles. So whim bubbles are basically all bubbles. They can have any reward, but they are way better than just random rewards because they also count as every reward. So for example, here it says, for every three commodity bubbles, when I enter the twin nightmare, I get one red commodity bubble, which is the highest normal rarity. If I add a whim bubble here, this counts as a commodity bubble and every other bubble. So just so you know, these are highly, highly sought after and just incredibly strong. Now I'm in like dream stage five or something. The chance goes up. Now I have 30% and I actually got ported. So this is kind of unlucky. Sometimes it happens that you get already ported. Now, if I click here on, we're now in a nightmare. So basically if I click on this right here, what will happen is it will show me all the bubbles and then I get one extra bubble because of my global effect, right? If I had more time and I stacked up more commodities, as you can see right here, I had five. If I got one more, I would have gotten a second red bubble. And red bubbles are insane. And you will see this later with the loot explosion. It tells me all the downsides that I have. And then I just, if you're ready, you start the advent of nightmare. So we're just going to do that right now. And now what's going to happen is a invulnerable enemy, it's the nightmare, is going to follow you around. You cannot kill this guy at all, right? What you will have to do is you have to kill these four spires that are in the map. And once you kill them, he will be frozen and you can get out of here. I have a very nasty mod here that makes it so enemies can't die immediately, which is incredibly rough. Now, the most important thing you have to know about nightmares is if you die, you lose a certain amount of your bubbles, right? That is the most important thing you have to know. So you do not want to die. You do not want it to happen. In tier 8, sometimes it can happen, especially in layouts like this like this layout is terrible right because i can't really like dodge anything as for what attacks he has he looks very scary right here if you're in tier sevens he's going to look very easy so these spires are basically just going to spawn monsters that you have to kill and after you kill them you can damage the spire again and then it will go down to zero it always stops at like 33 percent the last spire will basically spawn a mini boss that will be kind of rough. It can be rough depending on your damage. Now, all you have to know about this fella right here is don't just be a little bit careful of what he does. In tier 7s, he only has one attack, which is a charge attack that is very clearly signaled. It will most likely one-shot you. So just get out of the way there. But in general, he TPs after you. So it's not like you can just like be fast enough and he's not going to follow. That is not how it works. So this is the third Spire right here. Still only monsters that I have to kill. It looks easy. It's actually not as easy as you think it is. Always look at what the guy is doing. So for example, this is the signal. This is the charge. You're gonna, this can also occur in tier sevens. This slash attack is only in tier eights. So yeah, it, it gets a little bit more rough, but just don't die. That's all I can say. Just don't die. This is another attack that he only does in tier eights. In tier sevens, you're mostly fine. The only thing is the charge attack, as you can see right here. Yeah, so you can manage him quite well. Just be sure that, especially when you're like a melee build or something, you manage your damage uptime and stuff because you cannot damage him. Like I said, you also can't CC him as far as I know. So this is the last stage. The minion spawned way earlier. And now if I get him to like 20%, he's going to spawn a mini boss. Um, this one, this little fella right here. I actually have pretty good damage. So we're going to get him down quite fast. Just so you know, these can be quite rough on low gear and they are very, very tanky. Just so you know. So these are not that easy. You can die here. And I think early in the tiers, you don't get as much downside of killing him as with these. But yeah. So if I died here, I think I would lose two bubbles actually in tier 8. I'm not 100% sure how it works. But yeah. Now I can click on it and I can say dreams come true. And if I click that, I get all my bubbles. I click on it. Here are all my bubbles. Now you just go over them and it's going to rain loot. In this case... It's basically just an example map. It wasn't crazy, right? I got like, what, three, four, five FE and a tier seven map. One important thing to note here that I'm going to say again in the stage later is you can drop a lot of deep space maps from this and deep space maps are worth like 10 FE each. This league mechanic is also a really good way to get your first slates from the cube rewards and then also a really good way to get memories and hero relics from the black sail rewards that's for the passive tree uh, the way you access everything in this game is basically from patty right here 
So you can click on her, you can see your current nightmare if you need to. You can see your dream cloud atlas, which we're going to talk about right now, and then also dream interpretation. This is basically the crafting system, which I'm not going to go into in this video. It's all about currency. But let's talk about the atlas. So I have my complete atlas unlocked already, but basically the more dreams you do and complete, the more of these points you will unlock over time. And they basically enhance the way you engage with these dreams or they just straight up increase your loot. Now, if you don't like your choice, you can at any time say reset. So we're just going to do that right here. I have the full 42 points. So we will start right here. You don't really have any choice. Now you can go left or right. This is what looked good to me initially because you get one extra bubble, but that can be a really bad one, right? So I personally would go to the right first, but this one is okay. So you have a very, very small chance to get a Queen's Grace, which is one of the portals to one of the new bosses which costs like 100 plus fe it is extremely rare i've dropped it i think two times so far but the reason you want to take it because next you get to the maximum dream stacks what maximum dream stacks do is they make it more likely that you stay in your dream which means you can ramp up your bubbles for longer before going into the nightmare which is actually a lot stronger than just getting some random bubbles now before you can take this next note it tells you to take two exterior points so i would personally just go into additional damage Taken in Nightmare, you get the max stream stacks, and then you have to repeat this over and over. Two points outside, one point here, uh, two points outside, probably just extra damage against Nightmare Monsters. Those Nightmare Monsters can get pretty pesky, so you want to take less damage from them, otherwise you're going to have a huge problem. So now here you are at plus four dream stacks, so now your dreams are going to be a lot longer, which eventually you want to get both of these as well eventually you have all of them right and you start with four initial bubbles instead of two but right now this is what we're going for so i'm just going to pump them into whatever all right and now we are at a very important point as well which is splendor now this node makes it so you have a chance to get rainbow bubbles they cannot usually be reached unless the dream says you can get rainbow it's the tier after red and let me tell you in terms of loot reds are super good but this is like times three so if you ever have the chance to get a rainbow or try to go for a rainbow, yeah, it's crazy. So then you take this, and after that, what you want to do, these three points right here are not that crazy. Now, Breaking Bud is kind of strong, so you can get a Sweet Dream Mist, which is basically these clouds following you around. If you stay in them for like half a second, they will either give you another monster or another chest, which in tier 8s can drop quite a bit of FE. So you want to get here eventually. But I think the next point after you finish this half moon kind of, you want to take this plus one and this plus one for the extra initial bubbles. All right, so now that we know how it works, what is the bubble tier list? What bubbles should you pick? So S tier is commodities, the ones you just saw. Obviously, it was a very low juice map, but I've had explosions. So I think the most raw flame elementium I've had in one nightmare was around about 170 in a tier eight juiced deep space map. It is insane. It's just absolutely crazy. It goes out of like, yeah, it's insane. Whim is the second one. That is the one that counts for everything. The rewards are good. They are not as good as some of the other things, but when you pick them, they count as other rewards. So you can kind of get extra bonuses and whatnot. But Whim is very strong. Now, the one thing I will say is that could actually be better than commodities some of the time is Nether Realm. This is basically only true in tier 8s. In tier 7s, they suck. They give you maps. And what these can be is they can be deep space maps. So if we look right here, it says not level 5, which is tier 8. It says 5 plus. This, these are deep space maps. And they are worth like 10 FE each. I've had nightmares with like 11 or 12 of these. So that is a lot of money. And I'm also running them so I can kind of semi self-sustain. So it's really nice. Just so you know, in tier 7, absolute dog. In tier 7, I would put this at like, I don't know, C tier down here. But if you're running tier 8s, if you have a character that can do tier 8s, it is definitely up there. It might even be better than commodities. So after that, in A tier, we have nothing just to showcase how much better these rewards are than the rest. In B tier, we have fluorescent memories, which are the divination cards in this game. And then C tier is everything else. That could be any items, right? So gear is the worst one. Actually, I should put here F tier is gear. In between, we have stuff like slates and hero memories, for example. Hero memories can be very good, but they are weighted to what character you are. And if you're, for example, playing a meta character like I do, some of these hero memories will be very expensive and you can actually get a lot of money. But if you're playing an off-meta character that not a lot of people, the items are not really sought after, 
It's a lot worse. Getting the cube reward will get you slates, which I think is very strong if you want to just SSF. You don't want to buy stuff and you can just craft your first slates. Very strong in like tier fives, tier six, tier sevens. Definitely go for it, right? If you need to, but in terms of selling, they're just not as good as raw currency. Now then let's talk about Time Mark 8. So this league is a lot different. You know that in the past, I've made some videos about speed farming tier sevens. This league, tier 8s are a lot easier to get. They're very cheap. They're like 0.7 FE each. So if you want a boss rush, you want to do it on tier 8s, just so you know. However, tier 8s are harder. What I will tell you is the difference between tier 7 and tier 8 are staggering this league, especially when it comes to the league mechanic. I would say you probably get 2 to 3 times the amount of loot. Now, as for strats, first up, my tier 7 strat. I want to start this out by saying you definitely want to be tier 8 as soon as possible. Gear up your character. Get strong enough. Tier 7 is so much worse this league than tier 8. You can still make monies, sure, but all the money you should make should go towards your character and getting stronger. So while you're unlocking your cards, I think this is a very strong setup. However, in endgame, there's better ones. We're going to go over that in a second. I want you to know, I love tier 7 boss rushing. This league is not one of them where you should be doing this. Tier 8s are so much better with the league mechanic, and they are so much easier to get. They cost like 0.7 FE each. You can just spam them this league. They made them drop a lot more. There's a lot more ways to acquire them. So tier 7s are just a means to an end to get to tier 8s now. But tier 7s are still very, very good to unlock your cards. So obviously, you will not have all of these cards unlocked. You will not have all of the stages unlocked. I have all of them unlocked already. And the best way to do that, to unlock your initial thing, is with Rational. This is a new card they added, which is just bonkers. What this basically does is it removes all of the cards you have here. So if I had this in my deck right now, all of these get removed. Only Agile stays. Agile is this card right here. And this card basically just makes it so you can complete your cycle faster. So whenever you finish one of these Confusion cards, you get to the next stage and you can upgrade a card permanently. So you only have that. And so that's basically what you want to do anyways. You don't need any of the shitty rewards because they're really bad in tier 7s. But what you get from Rational is you get double boss completion. So twice as fast this goes up to a hundred percent chance to obtain one additional attention point so it's ridiculous you can just boss farm way quicker get extra rewards it's very very strong for unlocking your initial cards just always do that every two maps you do you can upgrade any of these by one star now to complement that tier seven isn't that juicy right so you don't want to do anything that scales off of your juice really you want to do either so the one thing you definitely want to do is you want to do dark search as soon as you have these unlocked you want chance for dark search to occur you want another chance for dark search to occur and you want this card that gives you extra chance for bosses to appear now in tier sevens dark search itself doesn't drop that much right it, it's just not very good however the bosses are still really good the keys cost like 10 fe right now so if you get them that's huge what you want to do is you want to kill the boss right the normal map boss and after that if you have dark search on your map just press the stage once and if it has a boss, it will immediately spawn. And if it doesn't, you can just pour it out of the map. It's not even worth clearing the rest. Now, the boss things you'll get are edicts. So if, if we price check this right now, you can see they're around about 10 to 11 FE. These three, that is. And this one, if you're really lucky, you get Doom, which is the Uber one, which is 44. Now, you won't get these very often, but I mean, it's kind of free. You're boss rushing anyways. You're getting rewards from the boss. It's a nice thing that you don't really have to do anything for. A lot of these other mechanics, they just take forever and they just make you do less maps. So it's a very spammable mechanic. As your second mechanic, there's two things you can do. The first one is you do Eterna. You want to have all of these other than the one that gives extra pages. That one is kind of useless. All of the Eterna ones because it spawns extra mobs and bosses that give you pages and those also sell. This is how they look like. There's a normal one, the Eterna Reverberation. If you look right here, they're around about 2.4. They drop quite frequently. There's also an upgraded one, which I think is like 4 FEs. So either way, if you want to do that, that's fine. It is very strong, I would say. Other than that, Cube is also quite good. I would say I probably like Eterna a little bit more. However, I think it unlocks a little bit after cube. So either do cube or Eterna, whatever you get. And I guess another important card that you want to get is uh, Zeal, which gives you extra monsters. And then I also put Relaxed in here, which gives you extra XP. Since if you're unlocking this, you're probably low level. But then let's go over Time Mark 8. If you have completed Traveler 7 and unlocked Tier 8, then there is some juicier methods of making currency. Now, only do this strat if you can comfortably do 8-0. Okay? So basically... 
Time Arc 8, you don't need to do 8-1, 8-2, 8-3. Those are all cute. You don't need to do Deep Space and pay like 20 FE every map. And don't get me wrong, Deep Space is huge, right? Once you have a lot of currency accumulated, those are going to be the juiciest ones. But what we're doing right now is something more along the lines of this. The no-brainer as always, Zeal. Gives you extra monsters. It's just good with everything. Complete no-brainer. And then we're using God of Machines and Dark Surge. Now... When it comes to these cards, you should have already unlocked them all through tier 7s, right? Or most of them, at least. They don't have to be fully leveled up, but as much as possible. This changes now. So now we're taking other cards when it comes to Dark Search. We're taking all of them. Now, the first two cards are basically there to give you chance to have Dark Search at all in your map. Now, you can also force it on your map. You don't want to force God of Machines. We're going to talk about that in a second. But if you look at the trader right here, there's a compass shop. Dark Surge Compass has only cost 3 FE. It is basically worth it, in my opinion, so you can play around with that. But in Deep Space, it's 100% worth it. But in Normal, I don't know. Do not buy these. 10 FE, it's worth it in Deep Space because they really chunk out currency. But in Normal Tier 8s, not really. But I digress. So basically, we're taking everything here that gives us extra juice. So this gives us extra Dark Surge monsters. Extra chance that the Jet Stream only consumes half of the energy. We still keep the extra boss chance, and then we also get the chance that all our map will be full of Dark Surge mobs, which is basically, if you get good reward types, which is going to be mostly currency, then it's going to rain Flame Elementiums. Now, just so you know, this mechanic is quite RNG-based. A lot of the times, you're just going to get normal gear, and it's going to be terrible. And then at one point, you're going to get like double currency reward, and all of a sudden, it's raining FEs, right? Sure. One thing we actually do in the setup for both God of the Machines and for the Dark Surge is we go longing. This gives us a lot of rarity. And yes, most uniques are really bad, sure. But sometimes you get that one for 10 FE, 20 FE. And very rarely, you will hit the jackpot and you get like 100 plus. And there's so much gear dropping from both God of Machines and the Dark Surge that I think it's worth it. And then as for God of Machines, the most important ones are the ones that give you extra chance. Like I said, you don't want to pay 10 FE per map to do this but you have 33% chance, and I think there's also base chance. So more than every third map, you're going to get it. And then there's a lot of good ones here. Don't get me wrong, but you don't really have much more space. Now, you can experiment dropping the drop already for something like extra progress and stuff like that. But the cards I think are super worth it is first up the extra wave. So you have a 21% chance that after wave three, you get a wave four, which is very, very re rewarding. And then also... God of Machines interval is reduced. So this basically just means that the whole process is way faster. Like in every currency video I do, I want to remind you to look into your stash and actually see what stuff is worth. For example, if you're dropping a lot of Elixirs of Oblivion, this is actually worth 3 FE for a full stack right now. Just so you know, it's not just about raw FEs, right? You're also going to get a ton of Flame Sand, which right now sells for around about 20 FE for a full stack, right? 20 FE. That is going to be a lot of your money as well. Sometimes you will drop ultimate embers and they are like very, very expensive. The new currency of the league mechanic, right, is worth almost half an FE each and these drop like candy. The upgraded ones are like 2.8. Half of the Brave. If you have half of the Brave 1 and you can actually run them, that's huge because then you upgrade it to tier 2 and these sell for like 5 to 6 FE. So for a pretty quickie half of the Brave 1 to 10, you can convert them and then sell these for 6 FE each. If you're doing Dark Surge, the corruption material costs quite a bit. You can sell a 99 stack of these for 22 FE. Don't sleep on these and also don't sleep on the maps that you're dropping. The deep space maps, if you don't want to run them, they are, depending on the region, between 10 and 12 FE as of this recording. Obviously, sell your boss materials, sell your Dark Surge stuff. You can sell some of the compasses that you're going to drop, right? Um, always hand in all your fluorescent memories right here at the Space Time Wanderer. So yeah, just make sure that you sell everything that you don't need so you can buy upgrades for your build. Now, very important are your pets. You're going to get a ton of free pets by getting in-game currency. For example, click up here through the stuff. There is also, I think, merits they're called. You get a lot of uh, free currency here. Or if you want to spend some money in the game, then you're going to get them anyways. And the longer you play, you're just going to accumulate them even without paying. But in general, what you're looking for is everything that gives you extra flame fuel drop quantity or just drop quantity in general. Those are all the GG ones. Whether that is a unique pet, a epic pet, a common pet, they're always GG. You always want to use them. If you want to farm the most amount of currency, you don't want to rely on damage or defensive pets. 
you can have a setup for that, right? You can have different setups right here for bossing or nightmare or whatever you want. That's sure, but you got to switch then, right? For mapping, you want to have the most amount of currency. Otherwise, you're just not going to drop as much. Now, you can tick this on the main screen display right here. So for example, if you are, if you have that enabled, you will see the packs are right here and then you can swap. So I have a bossing setup with a lot of damage, right? Because the quant doesn't do anything against bossing and then I have a normal mapping setup. But yeah, that's about all I have to say for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it could help you out a bit. And uh, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.